sieht. Do you know what is the internal structure of a mouse? Let's go ahead and find it. Mouse is an external device normally we are using in computers, especially in laptops. This is the normal mouse that we are using in our daily life. When you consider about this mouse, uh, this is the outer surface of the mouse, which is uh, made up of plastic and something. And uh, this is the USB pin. Normally, you can see this is the scroll button. Uh, we are using this scroll button for the make our cursor upside and downside. Uh, when we connect this port to the female part of your laptop, you can see the la red light, red color LED bulb getting light up. While this light beam is connecting to this optical lens, the mouse will get a start up. So, uh, we'll go through the internal circuit of this mouse and let's see what it con consists. Now you can see QC pass in here. First of all, we need to remove the QC pass and this screw. Then we can see the separately optical lens and scroll and inside the PCB. Okay, now we are going to uh, move the disassemble this circuit. Now we are going to remove the external cover of this optical mouse. After removing this external cover, you can see the internal structure. Scroll, PCB and the optical lens. After removing the PCB from this internal cage, you can see the optical lens in here which is made out of fiber glasses. When we consider about this PCB design, in here you can see three switches switch number one number two and number three in here you can see the scroll and two capacitors and two resistors one here and another one in here you can see two leds and this this led which cons voltage consumption is 1.8 volts and this led voltage consumption is 3.2 Altogether, 5 volt consumption is in these LEDs. This is the same of sensor which is at the sensor center of the PCB. And this same of sensor it is contained with a tiny camera. You can see this is the tiny camera which is in this same of sensor. This camera has an ability of capturing 1500 images per second. Optical lens and the CMOS sensor. Does it important? When we consider about this diagram, we can see how the CMOS sensor and optical lens it is work. This is the CMOS sensor and this is the optical lens. This is the LED with an external cover and this is the PCB and this is the outer surface of fully mouse. When mouse connect to the laptop, you can see this LED is getting light up. All light beams are comes out from this LED. You can see all light beams are entered this uh, optical lens. You can see all light beams are comes uh, to this point and uh, reflect toward this surface. Against this surface, you can see all light beams are uh, entered to the CMOS sensor throughout this lens. After that, you can you, you can see this LED is this LED intensity is getting high. 
it means this CMOS sensor is getting activated. As Hasita explained earlier, this is the theoretical part and this is the practical scenario. You can see the PCB and the optical lens separately. When we connect this optical lens as this way, you can see as shown in this diagram, the LED emit its light beams to this optical lens. The optical lens, you can see in here, the light rays goes to the downward, that means to the surface. If we have the surface, then it reflects its light beam towards this CMOS sensor. When surface reflects the light beams to the CMOS sensor, you can see the intensity of the light get high. Again, let's see. When we have the surface reflection, the intensity of the light getting high. When the surface reflect the light beams, the intensity of this light getting high. That means the CMOS sensor is under activation mode. If we doesn't have any surface in this area, we doesn't have any surface. That means there is no any reflection. There is no any reflection to this CMOS sensor. That means the intensity of this light not in high. That means it is very low. But if we have again the surface and reflection, the intensity of light getting high. Now I am going to explain the most important part of this mouse. Do you know how the cursor is working here and there? Yes, exactly. Now I am going to explain about this. Can you remember when you start your PC or your laptop, what is the exact point your cursor it is? Yes, it is in the center. Now with this diagram, I am going to explain you how the cursor is moved here and there. Just imagine this is your PC and this is the cursor where it is at the center. At the very beginning of our explanation, we told that in this CMOS sensor we have a tiny cam. With this tiny cam and the help of the CMOS sensor, it helps to detect the movement of the cursor. According to this tiny cam, it captures the first photograph of this exact place where it is. When we move the cursor, when we move the mouse, the tiny cam detects the second photograph. In this CMOS sensor, we have three parts. The first one is digital signal processing unit. The second part is memory. Then the third part is the processing unit. This digital signal processing unit help to detect the variations of the first photographs and the second photographs. That means with respect to the first photographs, the second photographs detect the variation. When we consider about this x and y axis, the coordinates represent as 1 and 1. Just imagine our position is now 1 and 1. If we move our mouse to the left hand side or right hand side, the coordinates also getting changed. And that means the DSP unit capture the position of the first photographs and the second photographs. And the processing unit, it dimate or it calculate the difference between the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. Then exactly the PC can change the its cursor place upside, downside, left or right. And this is the normal mechanism in the cursor. But when we consider about the dot per inch value, when it varies, the cursor speed also getting varied. It depends on the market or the product the product quality. One special thing in a mouse I need to explain you that is scroll. You guys may know what is scroll. Using this PCB you can see a scroll in here. We can rotate the scroll downward or upward otherwise we can say clockwise or anti-clockwise like this. 
This Z wheel helps to make the cursor going upside or downside. Actually how it happened? Do you have any idea about this? I will explain that. This, when the Z wheel going up or down, this quadrature square pulse generate in here. It detects the previous location of the quadrature pulse and the next position of the quadrature pass and the different between these two identify and the variation of the cursor happens in here now I need to move up to this whiteboard diagram again when we do our movement in clockwise the pulse generate in this Z wheel as this way if we move this into anti-clockwise direction, the pulse is generated as in this way. Now you can see that Z wheels has a quadrature function. That means in clockwise direction like this way, it generates the function and the anti-clockwise direction, it generates like this way. Now you can have a clear idea how the cursor is work in our anti in our optical mouse let us discuss about the problem we have in this mouse first of all when we use this mouse for a long time you can see due to dust light beams of led may not fall into this optical lens at the same time you can see CMOS sensor will be covered with dust. It means CMOS sensor and this mouse it is not working properly. Prasipa, what do you think about this reverse engineering project about the mouse? Well, it's really good because if any person really interested about the internal structure of mouse, this video will help you. Especially when we consider about electronic engineering students. This video will help them to guide uh, how to identify the internal structure of a mouse and what are the components inside the mouse and their functionalities. Especially, this was a really good experience to both of us, isn't that? Absolutely true. Especially on behalf of making this video, I would like to thank Dr. Jonathan Prasenger as coordinator of the iPad module. And especially, I need to thank Ms. Swapna Pemusuri and Mr. Radhika Pereira. Especially, my thanks need to go my colleague, Asadarana Singha, and our Prasipa Thank you very much.